Good evening. Welcome to the May 13th, 2014 meeting of the Manchester Town Council. First order of business, and usually I have to get corrected for this, so I try to move right past it, is a uh, public hearing on the fiscal year 2015, can't believe it's 2015 already, general fund budget. So this was introduced a month ago and uh, has been available. So we have do you hear a motion to open the uh, public hearing? I make a motion that we open the public hearing on the FY15 general fund budget. I'll second the motion. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Is anybody here today to uh, comment on the budget? Uh, Tracy, anybody sign up specifically for that? No. Going once, going twice. No public comments. Take a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion we close the public hearing on the FY15 general fund budget. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. First order of business approval of the April 8th, 2014 minutes. Just a copy in front of you, also <coughs> electronic. I make a motion to approve the April 8th, 2014 minutes. I'll second that motion. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah. Next, you should have a copy of the 2000, uh, March 2014 and April 2014 check registers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we'll entertain a motion to receive the check registers. We do both. Okay. I, I think we can do both together. We've done that before, right? Okay, I'll make a motion we accept the two March 2014 treasurer's report and the April 2014 check register. I'll second the motion. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Mayor's report. We have a couple of things today. Um, first, the June <coughs> meeting. So ordinarily our meetings are second Tuesday of every month. We have an alternate meeting on the fourth Wednesday of every month. Uh, due to, uh, me we won't get into all the details, but we have to have a meeting. We can't wait until the end of June to have a meeting with the fiscal year switching over. And the MML convention this year is moved due to the primary election in June, and three of us, I believe, are going to the MML convention, um, which is a good event. So, therefore, we're, we're going to move, we're making the announcement now. I think we've already advertised. I hope we will be advertising. Okay. So, everybody on board with moving the meeting in June, the regularly scheduled meeting, to June 3rd, which is one week before. And then uh, we'll get that information out, which is a which is a change. The town office here will be closed on Monday, May 26th, which is Memorial Day. We have a two a new town website, so ManchesterMD.gov. It was ManchesterMD.org. It's now switched over, so you can check that out, pay your bills, see everybody's pretty faces. And then, last but certainly not least, we have a certificate of appreciation. Tonight for Miss Sharon Hughes, and we have some people accompanying her. A uh, few pieces of information: the Nature Center started 19 years ago, approximately 19 years ago. Miss Hughes has been with them for 17 years, which is amazing. Yeah. She announced her resignation recently. She's done many jobs over the Nature Center, including, certainly not limited to, chairing the Easter Adventure, Easter Adventure and Spring Fest events, which are great events, helping to develop the nature. The, the master plan recently put together a historical review of all the years the Nature Center and an updated business plan, serving as treasurer, developed the most most of the nature's forms, Nature Center's forms, created and administered the website, designed the center's logo and letterhead, and served as chair for a number of years. So thank you for all of your service. Yeah. Thank you. And before you sit down, I know you might yeah. got all the way back. <laughs> have a certificate of appreciation. Some also of appreciation. Thank you. That is all for the mayor's report. We'll move into the town administrator report. Steve? 
Okay, good evening, Mayor and Council and members of the community. We'll go ahead and start with the April 2014 administrative report. There's been no change on either the Sheets project or our SHA projects. With our Maryland Emergency Administration grant, we have two additional projects which were approved, and both these projects are our wastewater treatment plant, and both are energy efficient heating systems. Uh, by the way, through this phase, uh, we were able to obtain $37,000, and we completed three projects, the two that I just mentioned, and also the energy study. Uh, the Civil War Heritage Trail Grant, there's been no change on that, and hopefully we'll get approval in July. Uh, our Victory Street Town Hall Police Station project, the site was surveyed. We met with our design architect, uh, architect on Wednesday, May the 7th, and we discussed the first draft. We did receive the second draft today. Uh, if anyone's interested in seeing that, see me after the meeting and I'll be able to share that with you. Uh, I have been approached uh, in regards to residents that live on York Street in regards to the truck traffic. Uh, actually, uh, Chief Hess and I are looking into this issue and uh, hopefully we can, uh, you'll hear something back from us over the next several months on that. Code enforcement and rental housing, as I mentioned in my report last month, the town continues to make aggressive moves at certain locations throughout the town in regards to code violations, and currently we're working with many different agencies throughout the county to combat, combat these problems. Uh, under miscellaneous items, I want to thank Michelle Wilder and Diane Nod for attending the April 23rd WRCC meeting with me. Uh, for me, uh, the FEMA meeting, Kelly and I met with FEMA reps on May the 2nd in regards to reimbursement for the February 12th and 13th snowstorm, and I want to commend Kelly on the fine job she did on keeping the records for this event. We did find a glitch in our personnel policy in regards to meals for our employees while they're working on duty, uh, so hopefully we'll uh, get that straightened out. We will not be reimbursed for that. Uh, also, we're currently in the beginning stages of applying for a $100,000 community legacy grant for some revitalization projects. Uh, I uh, turned Jared Schumacher loose on that, so hopefully over the next several months you'll hear some more information about that from me. I want to thank Gino De Palmer on spearheading a Main Street beautification project in regards to the flowers in the planter in front of BB&T Bank, and also he's working on the possibility of additional planters on Main Street, and I want to thank him for that. Any questions on the administrative report? Steve, you know, I've heard discussions. It, it seems like it goes beyond just disturbance and inconvenience for residents on York Street, but there's been some damage possibly caused by, That's correct. by the overuse. Uh, if you take a hard look at York Street, York Street was not constructed to handle the type of tractor-trailer traffic that it's getting. And you'll be able to see, uh, you know, the stress cracks. Uh, we had a water main break back in December, I believe, which could be attributed to that. Uh, you know, we've been fielding questions and, and concerns from the residents probably over the last uh, several months, maybe longer, about the amount of truck traffic that does use that. So okay. we, uh, we have to investigate that further. Steve, when you're talking about investigating, are you looking at weight restrictions? You're looking at no, no truck traffic signs? Is it Could be a number of different things. Um, the possibility of, of weight restrictions. Uh, we want to get a handle on the actual traffic that's actually using York Street. Just trucks or in but totality? Everything, everything. So um, I think either we can do it ourselves or we could actually work with a group from the county that could assist us on that through their traffic engineering group to give us a better idea, a better handle. So, okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, moving right along, we'll get into the April 2014 Public Works Report. Uh, you have in front of you the water and wastewater status report for April. We have received our certificate of potability for Maryland Department of Environment for three new wells, one at Manchester Farms and two at the Manchester Valley High School site. Under wastewater, uh, Utility Services Group is continuing the camera work on the gravity sewer mains throughout the town. We've uh, completed about 6,000 feet. And I'll give you a conservative figure that uh, we've probably located 40,000 gallons per day of infiltration coming into our system. Uh, we have another long stretch that we're going to be doing, and that's York Street. We know that there's infiltration coming in on York Street, so that's basically the next phase of that contract. Under NPDS and Stormwater and WIP, I attended the Mayor County Commissioners meeting on April 17th, in which the mayors and the commissioners signed a joint 
memorandum of intent in regards to sharing the responsibility at an 80-20% split between the county and municipalities. It's now up to the WRCC, the Water Resources Coordination Council, to work out the details on that agreement. Our stormwater pollution prevention plan and our notice of intent for the town maintenance facility were completed and were submitted to MDE for review and approval on April the 30th. Under maintenance roads and parks, our winter cleanup were about 80% complete. Uh, we still have some areas of repair around town. We, we've done some blacktop over the last several days. Um, Councilman Pacelli had mentioned about the testing of our light poles at our athletic fields. Uh, actually, I reached a dead end with the company that I was working with, which is Osmos, and they do a lot of pole testing for BG&E. Uh, I've, I've explored other, other companies. Unfortunately, they're way out of state. I mean, we're talking Montana, Maine, different locations. So hopefully I can get back on board with Osmos. The problem is they can't fit us in until the end of this year. So I'm trying to reach out to some other companies on that. Uh, Councilman Wilder is working on updating the joint use agreement between the town and the North Carroll Rec Council. Uh, working with the Nature Center and acquiring a PO, uh, project open space fund for design construction drawings for the proposed addition, as well as working with Mr. Ed Singer at the Carroll County Health Department in regards to well and septic for the center. I want to congratulate the Nature Center for another very successful Spring Fest. Uh, I believe the crowd was estimated at between four and 500 visitors back there. That was a nice day. That was a very good event. And also, I want to mention this, that the, fire, the Manchester Volunteer Fire Department will sponsor their first annual gas engine show coming up this Saturday and Sunday. And I want to personally thank Sharon Hughes for all of her hard work uh, at the Nature Center. It was a pleasure working with you over those many years, Sharon. I mean, the Nature Center, uh, it's a fine facility, and you definitely have a hardworking group back there, and I appreciate working with you. Any questions? Steve, with respect to the light poles at the, uh, at the Christmas Tree Park, are you testing for the integrity of the pole beneath the ground? Correct. Uh, what the company would do would actually uh, dig around the base of the pole to see how much rot has taken place. Uh, also, once that test is complete, then they'll put a, uh, some type of barrier around the base of the pole and backfill it if they find it uh, you know, suitable. To right. And I think most of you guys are probably aware, but so everybody else here is aware that it's something that we've looked at the last couple of years um, as, and I don't know, do you remember the age of those things, but give or take 35, 37 years. Correct. And we got to the point where um, some of the, the T-bars fell down. So we had lights coming down, we had the T-bars coming down. Um, thank goodness it didn't happen while we had crowds of four or 500 people up there. But with the, the ground being saturated and the age of those things, we want to get a handle on you know, what the status is of those, uh, you know, large structures that could come down. Do we have uh, anything else for Steve in there? Water situation, well's looking okay, it looks like. Very good, yes. Uh, the static levels of the wells are doing very well. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chief Hess is not here tonight. I believe Steve is going to deliver the police report as well. Sure, I'll take care of that. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. The Manchester Police Department responded to 56 calls for service in the month of April. Investigations resulted in nine arrests during the month, and we had two minor incidents. One involved a theft at Sheets. All three suspects were located and arrested. The other involved a larceny in a recovery house on Westminster Street. Uh, let's see. Traffic hotspots and enforcements, uh, Park Avenue and York Street during the month of April. After receiving several traffic complaints, we initiated enforcement efforts. Uh, the police department gave out 10 state citations and 24 warnings were issued. And they did receive uh, a lot of positive feedback from the community members in that area. Uh, they did attend and participated and assisted with the Manchester Baseball League's opening day event. And on the back of the report, uh, Chief Hess has attached the event schedule, which is coming up. Uh, one thing to note that uh, the Manchester Police Department and the Hampstead Manchester Auxiliary Police Department were uh, at Charlotte's Quest Nature Center Spring Fest. 
And of course, as you see, Chief Hess has the tractor show listed. And also, uh, May 18th is the Cascade Lake Triathlon that uh, our officers are going to be part of. And then we have the Memorial Day Catherine's Calls Run and Walk. That's it. Thanks, Steve. Any questions about the uh, police report? I know we say it almost every month, though, but if there's feedback out there on traffic hotspots that we're missing, we are keeping an inventory of the traffic hotspots around town and the police are having uh, an ongoing effort to, to monitor these areas and, and address the issues appropriately. We've been getting some good feedback on that, and I think the, the issues have been going down. So things have been going well in the police department. We haven't had a chance to meet Chief Hess yet. Um, knock on the door during business hours. He's usually there. Um, I think that's it. All right. Moving right along. Ordinance 217, <coughs> the town budget has a static, the same tax rate, 0.216 on every $100 of assessed value. It was introduced last month and it's up for discussion. There were no public comments during the public hearing. We have a motion to approve Ordinance 217, which is the fiscal year 2015 budget. I make a motion we approve Ordinance 217 for the FY15 budget. Second it. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, so we have a budget for another year. We can keep paying employees and keep the doors open, the lights on. Um, special thanks to uh, Steve Miller, Kelly Baldwin, Chief Hess, um, everybody up here, the, the department heads in town. Um, I know this is something we say every year, and many of you might not hear it, but these budgets are extraordinarily tough to compile. They're, they're very tight, and the people that are in this room and some that are not in this room spend a lot of hours and put a lot of care into trying to keep these tax rates as low as we can while keeping the value of the services as high as we can. So I think we are, and John, don't quote me on this one, I think we, <laughs> we are, uh, in Carroll County, we have the second lowest tax rate for any municipality that has a police department. I think Hampstead is the only one that is lower by, what is it, two cents now? If that, less than two cents. But Hampstead, as anyone's driven up, driven up and down through 30 knows, is, uh, has a much different uh, s you know, atmosphere in terms of the commercial development. Right? So this is almost exclusively a residential development, a residential you know, municipality. So to have a, a town police department and be able to do all the things we do and keep the tax rate where it is, um, is commendable. And it's really the folks you know, over here at the, at the table and, and out in the field every day that do it. All right, ordinance 217, that was the good news. And not that this is bad, but the, uh, we can kind of do these in conjunction. Ordinance 218 is the water rate. And the water and sewer rates are enterprise funds, meaning they need to, to balance, you know, every year. And we do what we can to, um, again, keep those low. But there's only so much we can do when the cost drivers of treating water and getting it to the houses and, and then treating sewer, you know, continually go up. So Ordinance 218, uh, we're introducing tonight. That will be voted on June 3rd. Am I correct, Kelly? And Ordinance, and that changes the water rate from $2.75 per thousand gallons to $3 per thousand gallons. It changes the residential unit charge from $15 to $17. So that's 218. 219 I have here someplace. Two nineteen if someone can give me a hair, I got it. Effectively does the same thing on the sewer side, changes the per thousand gallon charge from five fifty to five seventy five and the unit charge from twenty dollars to twenty two dollars. So those are introduced tonight. We'll have a public hearing on June third and vote on those. Next item on the agenda is uh, introduction and discussion of old town development. By Mr. Marty Hill and uh, maybe his group. If you guys don't mind coming up, that way folks at home can hear while they're making their way up or Mr. Hill's making his way up. 
it's important to note, this is, um, this is not anything we have, it's not been officially, I guess, presented to the town. We don't have plans. This is really an opportunity for uh, these folks to talk about their ideas for you know, what they think they could do with that property, some of which is inside town, some of which is not currently inside of town. I'd like to just start off and um, tell you a little bit about who we are. I mean, we operate as Woodhaven Building and Development. We've been developing in Carroll County, Southern PA now for 40 years. Um, the ownership of Woodhaven is myself, my daughter, and my son. We all live here in the area, somewhere between 30 and Lineboro, and uh, been here. They've been here all their life, and I've been here uh, a good part of mine. Um, we have with us tonight, in addition to Jen Bobsick, uh, Jim Pyatt. Jim has been our development coordinator, has worked through projects with Manchester and just about all the other towns and the county agencies over the years. We've worked together for how many years now, Jim? 24, 25. How old's Evan? <laughs> okay. Um, we have with us also Marty Hackett. Uh, Marty has worked with us for a long time. Marty is the a principal of CLSI, our engineering planning firm. They also work with us on uh, Section 1 and Section 2 of Halley Hill. So they have um, good understanding of working with the town. And I think uh, we've worked well with Steve and Michelle and the rest of the uh, town people over the years. The property that we're here to just discuss with you this evening consists of uh, the Lippy Farm, which is south of town on the west side of Hanover Pike. The portion of the farm that was on the east side of Hanover Pike is now where Manchester Valley High School is, and our family gifted that to the county for that school site. Um, the other portion of the property that we're talking about tonight is a community called Old Town. It's been a recorded subdivision in the town for 30, 36 years, 30 some years. Um, never been improved, but it's been in the town and uh, recorded and paying taxes for, for all those years. And what we'd like to do is present to you some thoughts we have about how we can move forward on combining those two properties on the west side of Hanover Pike in a manner that we think would be uh, advantageous to everyone in town and to us and to the community at large. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Marty Hackett and maybe if we could um, turn the lights down and people want to turn around, he has a PowerPoint presentation. Of the county's master plan and the environment, 
and also to the Manchester town corporate limit. Um, the project is this location right here. Oh, I'm sorry. This, this piece right in here is the Lippy Farm, and this is the recorded Old Town uh, subdivision. The Lippy Farm is not in the incorporated town limits at this time, but it does have a master plan street uh, that I'll talk more about as we get going. I'll um, come back to that, but it's lies within the county at that point. This is the area in white that is the Lippy Farm, which is not incorporated, as you can see it much better on that map. Um, but, uh, what, what we would like to do is combining the properties. We've got the Master Plan Street as shown on the map, which is in, in the, on the Lippy Farm, is to try to figure out a way to get it from Southwest Avenue, Southwestern Avenue, extending down opposite Maple Grove Road. It's a lighted intersection, controlled intersection, and you have that one access point on the van instead of having another location. Um, probably we're not in signal warranted up in that location. Um, we think we can design a, a roadway that's, that's safe at that intersection to accommodate the traffic. Okay. This is the surrounding area that that, that road will accommodate. Uh, you can see there's many houses back there that could utilize that road to the controlled intersection. Um, instead of using the Sharmall Drive, which is not, not a controlled intersection. Okay. What we propose, combining the project, this layout shows the 40 lots. And the 40 lots, we said, we said well, you already got recorded lots in Old Town that are already accounted for for water, sewer. We'd like to reconfigure that plan and incorporate the Lippy Farm would do get the same density, not, not any more lots, so there's no more impact to the town. And it gives us the ability to construct the road to the location of Maple Grove. Um, we think that's a real win-win for, for, for everybody, the community, obviously for the property. Um, like I said, the old town subdivision is there with 40 lots, and we'd like to modify it to come up with the same 40. These lots are, are larger. They're, they're basically roughly a half acre and larger. Some of the lots shown here are even in excess of an acre. Um, the intersection, we looked at this close, and um, we think schematically we can certainly get a roadway design, safe access both sides, and it would be a single modification required for that location. Um, but access to that point. Um, this, this is the old high building. That is the pump station that was uh, previously needed to the town from the former former Dokus uh, family, which owned the old town uh, subdivision back in 1978. Um, Old Town, you see we're already in the sewer service area, or the water service area. The white, as it gets incorporated in the town, those maps will just get amended accordingly. Uh, it get a shade of blue, and on the sewer map, it's the same situation. It, it's, this is all been in the planned community and planned service area, as far as a growth area. Um, and that's our proposal to bring it on how we can get a master plan street built that we think vital and going to service a lot of area, um, a lot of homes in the community. And we, we believe that um, by reconfiguring the lots and not creating any more impact to the, the 40 that are originally recorded, um, we just think that's the way we need to go. That's good. Yeah, okay. Um, and then the only other thing that would require now would be for us to be able to annex that piece of the living property in order to do so and do the work with the town uh, and, and follow a petition to annex that piece of property um, to move forward. Are there any questions?
Jim, isn't there a small stream or wetland in there someplace? Yes, sir. Okay. And you have a plan about that, I assume? That's correct. I think we can, we can avoid it. That's, okay. That's the most favorable way. But the town would annex that piece, and so we would then have that wetland. No. Are the houses? The principal wetland area down in front is part of Old Town. Right. There may be some that goes up into the stream area here. That would be open space in the community itself. Most likely it's going to be a forest conservation area, reforestation area, that kind of thing. You have a question, sir? Well, I noticed you had a we we would maintain access to to the new road configuration. This this road here would be tied into the existing road or the, the new proposed road. And that's something that we, we would need to our council, legal council, to handle that for the present agreement that we need. Is the um, what are your issues with the um, um, We don't know at this time. We don't know if we can handle it for stormwater management in some cases, um, add to it, um, modify it. Um, we have to do provide water quality and that's that's through the design and engineering process that's got to go through it. This is a very lengthy process. Um, we have to we have to abide by all this local, state, you know, kind of regulations. So we might go to comment at that time we don't we don't have any impact as far as the road line or the road so we have very nothing we wanted to anticipate any grading To, uh, <clears throat> does anybody from the council have any questions for Mr. Hackett, or Mr. Pyatt? I have one, Mr. Hackett, and forgive me because I had that air vent over top of me. I couldn't hear everything you were saying. But I heard you mention benefit to both parties a couple times. Would you summarize for me again, please, the benefits, the benefit to the town? Probably the only way that 
<clears throat> that it would ever be built. Uh, but as Marty said, Charmel Drive, if you come out of there during morning peak traffic, you can't, there's no way you could ever make a, a left hand turn to get out of there. Um, and if you come out in uh, evening peak, there's just about no way that you could you could make a left hand turn there. I think I might have my rights in much longer. Yeah, you're right on both. You're right. And yeah. the other benefit, you know, What's rare is in this situation. Normally, my clients sitting there saying, "We'll get any lot you can physically get based on the zoning, and the density could be a lot more than what we have shown." What we're saying is, is that we have 40 recorded lots today that are already accounted for in the adequate public facilities. Is to not ask for any more than that, but just reconfigure them to make them nicer, and reconfigure the the roadway to encompass both properties to get that master plan and street built. Marty, what, what is the zoning? I mean, it might be different between the two properties. But. R15 is here, I believe, and the R20 sits back in here. Another, another benefit that we think it would provide is we would, with running the sewer through here, we would provide access points for additional properties that are in that Charmel Drive area plus we could provide a connection for the church up on the top there uh, and some of those other houses up along the top just by running a lateral or putting an extra, uh, <coughs> extra connection and so that they, it could be, the line could be gotten into. There are engineering details that we haven't gotten into in any specificity, but we looked at it and they seem to be logical things that we can add that do not impact our cost significantly but do provide an advantage to the town for different opportunities. Uh, that configuration, Tim, go back to the intersection if you would. The reason why that intersection is, or that road is so twisted right there, that is to avoid the wetlands in that area. And, um, and that's, that's been one of the reasons why owners prior to us uh, have never done anything. And it, the owner that we purchased it from probably at least 15, 18 years ago uh, came to us, wanted access through the Lippy property, and they couldn't, you know, just couldn't get what they needed at that time. Since that time, with the, when the state did the road improvements for Manchester Valley and created that new intersection at uh, Maple Grove, they also lowered that pipe that goes under Route 30. And the significance of that is that by lowering that pipe, it, it allows that area to drain much better. Fairly certain, so we have to identify that is pulling some of the wetlands in because it was the the invert of that pipe is most likely what caused that wetlands to uh, develop in there because it, it ponded or held the water on the uh, west side of the end of her pipe and couldn't get across. But they did lower that pipe, so it is draining better. But it's still wetlands out there in front. Of our plan is to avoid. So what is the alternative? If the town were to choose not to annex that piece of property, then what's the alternative? So we just go back to the um, old town and reconfigure that. So my question, excuse me, I have a question. If you're coming out southwestern to the dead end where it meets the cornfield at Charmill, mm -hmm. that's where it's going to continue to go directly through? It'll pick up there and it'll, where that, leave it where it was, that right there where our road terminates, mm -hmm. that should be southwestern. Okay. Yeah. And how much how much area or property is between the houses on Char Mill and the houses you're building and the road that you're proposing to, to include? Are you referring to this? Yes. Um, these lots are all they're half acre and above their distance is 
basically a couple hundred feet yard width, uh, yard depth. Mm -hmm. um, and then the houses come up the hill on the sharp mountain. Correct. Hill. Yeah, these these houses are all higher than, than these. Okay. Um, you're looking at uh, I mean that the elevation difference was probably twenty to thirty feet. But would you uh, consider the fact that the way you've got just where you had your finger on there, those houses going down the Stormell Drive, then they would have Stormell Drive in the front and the new route in the backyard, so to speak. Well, yeah, these the houses here will be facing that way. Yeah. That that road's a quarter today. That road bay, that, that road is a quarter on a plow already. So it would be backyards facing each other? Yes, yeah, so backyards. backyards. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> this is backyard here, and, and these houses would be facing that way. The rear yard would be in here. So this, uh, so they'd the, be facing the road. They would oh, be oh, facing each the each house would be facing right. the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. traditional. Un, unlike Dale's building over here on Main Street. <laughs> um, Back to the building. Do you anticipate this would reduce the traffic currently on Char Mill? I, yeah, I know. I mean, I don't live on Charmill, but leaving Charmill, you know, to get towards the high school in the morning is a little bit of an adventure, um, or in the evening, for that matter. Yeah, I, I go back out there every morning and back south to the high school and yeah. can't get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which uh, you know, unfortunately, most of that problem really is, of course, there's, you know, there's people in Manchester, but most of it's people that come through Manchester, right? It's not really... Do you guys have any? Yeah. We have to go through a long process um, in order to get you know, This is not something that comes in overnight. I mean, we have to go through and look at the intersection. We have to work with the traffic consultant. Anyway, we look at all those to design that intersection, modifications to the signals required to make it work as a four way intersection versus a three way, and so on. All right, I think we. You know, interest. Let me ask one more question. Sure. So everybody understands. Again, I want to get back and forgive me for repeating myself. The alternative, not building this road means forty lots coming out of Charmel. No, we have we we still come out on the thirty. It's just that we don't make the connection to Southwest, and the lots are smaller. Meaning, not the reduction of traffic on Charmel. It would have it would have no impact on Charmel because we wouldn't tie. Do you anticipate that you would come out? Would you still come out at Maple Grove, or do you anticipate that you would come out up top then? No, this is where we. This is what we're proposing. Okay. We would come out at Maple Grove because you have the traffic light there, and it's a. It just goes from a three-way to a four-way intersection. Right. We'd have to redesign the signal. Did you refer? Yeah. It, it, under it, Councilman it, Wilder's it, scenario, if if the town said no to the annexation, it would still come out here. Okay, that, that's what my question. But it just wouldn't connect to Southwestern, correct? That's correct. Okay. Because so the connection to Southwestern is actually in the portion that is the looking path that is not in the town limits. Okay. Um, I think, in the interest of time, um, unless you guys have anything else, or someone in the council has a question. So for members of the community, so you're aware, as um, Mr. Hackett said, it's, it's a long process. This is the first, you know, really a time that they brought something to the town to, to show to the town and to the community. So their, their next step would really be to, I guess, move forward with their plan and then would go to planning and zoning and, and all the, a lot of the questions the community had in terms of specifically what would happen with engineering and with traffic and with the pond and stuff, you know, is really, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of it's planning and zoning and would have to be sorted out, and those are public meetings, and there'll be plenty of chances to ask questions. 
Um, but thank you, folks, for coming in, presenting to the well, the, the council. Yeah, informative. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Well, I believe we have folks here that are. We have an election coming up. <clears throat> As everyone's aware from the signs, and we, uh, we have a couple of local candidates here that would like an opportunity to address the the council and the residents of Manchester through the forum. So I'll start in the order I have them on here, which is not alphabetical. Uh, Mr. Wentz. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank the mayor and the uh, council folks for allowing us to come over here and say a few words to everybody tonight. And uh, when elected on June the 24th, I hope that you see more of this because that's what we're lacking now. Uh, there's a true lack of, of communication between the municipalities and, uh, and, and the county government offices. And uh, we, we need to fix that. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been involved in the fire service here in Carroll County for 37 years. I'm currently the president of the Pleasant Valley Fire Company. I retired from Baltimore County Fire Department after a 30-year career there. Got two uh, children that were both uh, raised here. I've lived here all my life. Um, my mom and dad retired from the Carroll County Public Schools. My daughter is currently a first grade teacher at Runnymede Elementary. Um, three grandchildren, six, four, and three. I had the four and three today, so you're lucky I'm here. <laughs> um, but I am very concerned about the future and where we're going here in Carroll County, and I think there's a, 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 a focus right now that is not on what it should be. And that are the issues uh, that we need to uh, address on pretty much a daily basis. Public safety, public ed education, and infrastructure. And you saw some of that tonight in the previous uh, presentation. Uh, we've got a lot of issues that need to be focused on and not what you have seen lately uh, in the news. So. Um, I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time. Uh, I do want to tell you that I, I truly believe that there needs to be more of a connection between our municipalities and county government. Uh, there certainly isn't any of that now. Uh, I spent uh, the evening last week in Lineborough. Uh, I asked those folks, uh, when's the last time that you saw a commissioner? And a gentleman in the back row raised his hand and he said, I know exactly when it was. It was September of 2010. Uh, that's unacceptable. It is my intent to, if they will allow, and maybe they'd be tired of me, but it would be my intent to be over here on a regular basis, have communication. Uh, I've stopped in, I've talked with, uh, with Steve on a number of occasions already. I've spent time here in town with the Manchester Area Merchants Association, uh, which is a fantastic organization that uh, is doing a lot of great things here in this town. So um, I don't with an interest of time, I could stand up here until like, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Um, but I, I, I won't, I just ask for your support. Uh, I've got a website, very easy, stevewance.org. Uh, I would certainly appreciate it if you would pass the word and truly the, the most important thing that you can do is everyone has got to vote on June the 24th. That's the most important thing. Uh, regardless of who you're supporting, we have got to get out the vote. Historically, the primary elections are, have a very low vote, voter turnout. In Carroll County, that is the election, the primary election. So uh, I ask for, for your support. Um, you've seen some of my signs around town. I would certainly welcome any of you to, to reach out to me. I've got more signs. Um, and, and again, it's important that you vote on June the 24th and uh, stevewance.org. And, and again, thank you very much for allowing us a few minutes here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DiLeonardo? I also want to uh, thank the mayor and, and the council members uh, for giving me the opportunity to come in and speak a little bit tonight. Um, the only people that probably talk more than a politician is a lawyer, and you're getting both. 
<laughs> so I'm really going to restrain myself. Um, I, uh, I've never run for office before in my life, but I believe very strongly that we need a change in the way that we're handling criminal prosecution of cases in this county. Um, and I decided to run after seeing the changing face of crime that we're seeing in the county as well as a really dramatic uh, increase in drug overdose deaths in the county. Not many people know, but there was a 263% increase in drug overdose deaths in the county in, in 2012. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a major issue and it's why people are kicking in your doors when you're not here and stealing. And we have to get a handle on that. I've been working in the courts in this county for over 15 years, both as a prosecutor and private attorney. I've handled uh, thousands of criminal cases in, in the county. I have uh, served as a former senior state's attorney for Carroll County, a former assistant attorney general for Maryland, and I've been teaching law enforcement for over 15 years. I regularly teach FBI, ATF, Maryland State Police, and the National Fire Academy I've been working with for about 15 years. Um, I will tell you that for me, uh, one of the biggest testaments as to not only why we need change, but like Mr. Rance was talking about the need for partnership, is evident in the endorsements. I have received the endorsement from the Carroll County Fraternal Order of Police, the Maryland Fraternal Order of Police, and the Office of State Fire Marshal FOP. Because like me, uh, they see the need that there needs to be a change in the partnership between the prosecution and law enforcement. And uh, that's something that I have a history of bringing they recognize and something that's so important in dealing with our crime and drug issues. I, I will also tell you that one of the reasons I had asked and probably tell I've asked for a long time to come before uh, the council is I too believe it's extremely important because a lot of the initiatives that I want to bring uh, is going to involve not only a, a chief Hess, but it's going to involve the council. Uh, one of my initiatives that I really want to target is repeat offenders because you find a very small portion are the ones that constantly are committing the same crimes. And sometimes they're serious crimes, and sometimes they're what we would call nuisance crimes, but they're serious to you when you're dealing with them. And I want to be able to identify these individuals in each community, let them know ahead of time that they're on the list, and that they're going to have a zero tolerance approach when they get charged. And that's where our, our local police understand what they do, and they do the effort to charge those crimes that something's really going to happen to them. And so that's really something significant to me. I do intend to come back and work with the council and help identify those and listen to those concerns. Um, and, and that's why I'm running. And, and I would also tell you, if you want to learn more about me, I have a website at votedeleonardo.com. But certainly I'll be here afterwards to answer any questions. But again, thank you so much to the council for the opportunity tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stanka. I want to thank the uh, mayor and the council for having me here tonight. Uh, my name is Josh Stonko. I'm a candidate for the House of Delegates here in District 5. Uh, district 5 is a three-member district now. Uh, it changed from 5A, which is what represented uh, Manchester, Hampstead, Finksburg, and a, a good portion of Carroll County, to a three-member District 5, which is Carroll County, north of Liberty Road. Uh, so it's a little bit of a change for Manchester. Um, I'm from Manchester. I, I grew up here, attended all the schools all the way through. I uh, grew up playing sports in the, in the uh, up at Manchester and all that too. Um, what I'm looking for, uh, if I'm elected to the House of Delegates, is to focus on local issues. Uh, right now in the House of Delegates, uh, and for representing District 5 or all of Carroll County, we don't have anyone that's focusing on local issues. And this has been proven uh, most recently in the last session. Uh, first and foremost, we had uh, education money that was left hold, it was hold harmless, it was left on the uh, floor of the House based on their, their vote on the budget. Uh, I want to bring this money that uh, our taxpayers are paying back to Carroll County uh, so we can increase improve and increase the uh, quality of our schools. I'm focused on things like the volunteer gaming bill, which many of you know about. It was a, it's a very simple uh, nonprofit gaming bill. It helps our volunteer fire departments. It helps our uh, other nonprofits like the Ark of Carroll County. Uh, with Carroll County, it's a, it's a fundraising, additional fundraising source uh, that doesn't rely on our taxpayers. That's very important. Uh, it's been seven years. It still hasn't gotten through. Uh, in the House of Delegates, uh, House, the, the state Senate, Senate led by Joe Getty, I uh, got it through in each of the last four years. Uh, there was a last-minute bill that was put through this year. Uh, they allowed Baltimore City on the bill, and this effectively killed the bill. Um, and the reason why is because many of you know the new casino, uh, casino that's going into Baltimore City this year. Um, so we need real leadership. That's what I'm, I'm offering. Uh, I think we need a real change in people that are really rep representing our community. Uh, we even had some issues with communication that you guys know about with the liquor uh, license board issue that came up this year. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, basically the House delegation put a bill in that would re-establish re the funding source and where it went to for uh, 
basically crack down on underage drinking. Uh, this affects our town councils and our mayors uh, across Carroll County because the money is actually taken uh, that was originally established to go to them. It takes it back to a central fund in, uh, to be controlled by the liquor board. Uh, this was a, a major issue that made the papers and the reason why was because it all went through without us ever talking to our, our councils and our mayors. When you're making policy changes that are specifically affecting Carroll County, it's the, uh, it's the uh, job of the delegates and the state senators that are in there to uh, make sure we come back to the, the real leaders of our communities, which our, which our town councils are. Um, so that's really what I'm running on. I'm running on local issues. Let's bring uh, our taxpayers back, uh, taxpayer dollars back to Carroll County. Let's put our Carroll County residents first. I think we need change in the House delegates. That's why I'm running, like I said. And I appreciate your time. Appreciate you guys having me here tonight. And I'll be after as well to, uh, uh, to a answer any questions you have. I also have a website, joshuastanka.com. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. It has a lot of the bigger issues. Uh, and if you have any other questions on specific local issues and how I would address them and deal with them, I encourage you to ask me. Thank you. Thank you. Any other candidates for local office uh, that, that we, we missed? Okay. And then we'll take uh, questions and comments from the community. First, if somebody signed up, we do ask people. Did you sign up? I did. You did? <laughs> if you did, come on. Do you mind coming up? I, I can hear you, but the, the tens of thousands of people at home can't hear you. And I represent the troops, as you see. Uh, no, my name is Wendell Sissler. I live at Charmel Drive in Southwest Boulevard, right on the corner. And uh, I've lived there for 12 years now. Since I've lived there, the community has grown and grown and grown. What used to be farmland is not anymore. It's all houses and a whole lot more traffic. Traffic is one of the big issues on Charmel Drive and Southwest. Our town police try to patrol it once in a while, but they don't ever seem to be there when the cars are speeding and don't stop for the stop signs and the big trucks go rolling through. With all the building, we have enormous amount of trucks, dump trucks, big construction trucks, all travel on that road, which was newly paved and put in. The time they finished building, it might need another new road. I'm not too sure. But the speed, what worries me about a little bit about your development is the speed of the people that come over southwest that has a stop sign at Charmel Drive to make a right-hand turn to go down Charmel Drive and then fight the traffic getting out on 30. The problem I see is the speed that they come down over there, if it goes straight on through to a new road, instead of doing 40 in a 20 mile zone, they'll probably be doing 60 traveling right on through and past my neighbor's house right there. Um, I, I just think traffic is a big issue in this plan. If we can somehow control the traffic and, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if raising it from 20 mile an hour to 25 would be of any help, but people do make comments, this is crazy, 20 mile an hour. And it sort of is, mm -hmm. but I'm afraid if you make it 25 or 30, then they'll do 50. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure whether that's a good plan or just having more police protection there. But I'm, I'm very concerned about the traffic on this issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to uh, speak? Yeah. Right. We'll move on to committee reports. Councilman Smith. Um, I went to the Carroll Cable Commission meeting this week. The franchise are hoping to have it pretty much ironed out by July. So hopefully at the next meeting, we'll, well, after that, after my July meeting with them, we may know something. So. Other than that, that's all we really worked on this last time. Okay. Councilman Black? There's been no change since last um, time we, we talked. Um, there was no meeting in, in April, so we're having one next week. Okay. Councilman Charlie? I have nothing to report, though there is a model meeting that's scheduled for this week. Is it, you know, is it Thursday at noon? Thursday, Thursday at noon. Dutch Corner. Dutch Corner. No reports that can't make. I, I, I'll be in Columbia. <laughs> Columbia sounds better than this. Uh, Councilman Howe is uh, is not here tonight. But, uh, Councilman uh, Roberts. Uh, as Steve had said, I've been working on a joint use agreement between the town and the uh, North Carolina Council. I'm almost prepared to 
I'll submit my recommendations for that change. We've been operating under the same joint use agreement for, for many, many years, and it's been a good agreement, but uh, I would like to recommend a few changes, so I'll, I'll bring that to the council uh, in the town and um, maybe make some recommendations on how we can meet with the rec council to get these resolved, because there, there, there'll be some changges and there, there may be some conversation, but I'll, I'll make those recommendations and we'll go forward. Yeah, I, get, I think that's going to be good. Thank you for doing that. Youth Representative Natalie. Hi, um, I spoke with Mr. Miller tonight, and as of right now, um, the Environmental Club at Manchester Valley High School will be taking on the project to do the gardens in front of the town. And then also I'd like to really quickly say uh, congratulations to Manchester Valley's girls lacrosse team. They have brought the first county championship, mm -hmm. team championship, to Manchester this past week. <laughs> That's it. That's it? <laughs> All right. You're not going to go down to college choices or anything? <laughs> All right. Anything else for this group? All right. I know I'm take a motion to adjourn and we have light refreshments afterward. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second it. All right. Good night, everyone.